And as questions mount about the White House response, China, Japan, and South Korea all on edge. Again, violating UN resolutions, Pyongyang conducted its sixth nuclear test on Sunday. UN Chief Antonio Guterres condemned the act, calling it profoundly destabilizing for regional security and demanded the regime's leadership cease all provocations. But there's no mistaking that tonight, what was already a crisis, has just got worse. The time for half measures in the Security Council is over. The time has come to exhaust all of our diplomatic means before it's too late. We must now adopt the strongest possible measures. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. The time has come to exhaust all diplomatic means to end this crisis. And that means quickly enacting the strongest possible measures here in the UN Security Council. Only the strongest sanctions will enable us to resolve this problem through diplomacy. We have kicked the can down the road long enough. There is no more road left. The United States will look at every country that does business with North Korea as a country that is giving aid to their reckless and dangerous nuclear intentions. And what we do on North Korea will have a real impact on how other outlaw nations who seek nuclear weapons choose to conduct themselves in the future. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. 24 years of half measures and failed talks is enough. South Korea conducted a missile drill hitting targets in the East Sea. The simulation exercise of a strike on the rogue state's nuclear facilities was held before the crack of dawn on Monday in response to the Hermit Kingdom's latest provocation. Kim Yeon bin takes us to the thick of the action. The South Korean military gave its own response to Pyongyang's sixth nuclear test by firing off a ballistic missile and air to ground missiles. The simulated target was North Korea's Punggye nuclear test site. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the drills were aimed at warning the regime for its latest nuclear provocation. The military fired a land based Hummu 2A ballistic missile, which has a range of 300 kilometers, and a SLAM ER missile from an F 15K fighter jet. Officials say all the missiles accurately hit their designated targets. The Joint Chiefs of Staff say the drills were conducted against a target in the East Sea. The range to the simulated targets was set in consideration of the North's nuclear test site in its northeastern province. This exercise shows that our forces can keep our citizens safe from any threats from the North and proves that we can destroy the source of attack and key enemy facilities. Seoul and Washington are also planning to hold a combined military exercise in the next few days to jointly respond to the recent nuke test. North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test to date on Sunday. Experts say it was six times stronger than the fifth test and 11 times more powerful than the fourth. Look, absolutely worrying news today. It seems as if North Korea may be preparing to double down on yesterday's nuclear test. First, that big test yesterday, and now signs, according to the South Korean defense officials, that they may be preparing to test an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. So yesterday they tested, they conducted their sixth nuclear test, which they claim was a miniaturized hydrogen bomb, believed to be 10 times more powerful than anything they've tested in the past. And then if today's test goes ahead, they will effectively be testing the possible delivery system for that bomb and all eyes will be on the distance if, ahead, if indeed it goes ahead and whether or not it could hit the U.S. mainland. Today, South Korea responded to yesterday's test with live fire exercises of their own with both ground and air launched missiles. The drills by the South simulated the targeting of the nuclear site where North Korea carried out that bomb test deep inside a mountain. The U.S. have also responded with Secretary Mattis issuing a threat of his own. Any threat to the United States or its territories or our allies will be met with a massive military response, a response both effective and overwhelming. We are not looking to the total annihilation of a country, namely North Korea. But as I said, we have many options to do so. 
The continued provocations from North Korea have led to a dangerous face-off between the North and the world amid global condemnation, including, surprisingly, from both Russia and China. And now, South Korea defense officials also told the parliament there that the U.S. would seek to deploy a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier to the region. And yesterday, President Donald Trump tweeted that the U.S. might consider stopping all trade with countries that did business with the North, to which the uh, Chinese have just responded, saying that is unacceptable and unfair. But again, all eyes today on this possible ICBM test out of North Korea. Breaking overnight, North Korea reportedly on the brink of another ballistic missile test. Former senior CIA intelligence officer Tony Schaefer is set to meet with intelligence officials later this month, but he joins us first to discuss this escalating hey, good threat. Good morning to you, uh, Colonel Schaefer. And, and yeah. so basically, I want you to break down what happened with regard to the hydrogen bomb and how that compares to what we consider a run of the mill atomic bomb. In other words, why is this so much more severe? Yeah. Simply put, it's an order of magnitude more severe regarding the explosive effects. We figured out in the early 50s how to essentially do what we call a, 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 a hydrogen uh, enhancement to a weapon. We don't know for a fact that the North Koreans have mastered this. I mean, this, again, it's a, it's a two-stage explosion, uh, a, a fission-fusion explosion. The fission goes off, fusion hits in. It, 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 it is a order of magnitude. Hiroshima was 15 kilotons. We're talking about upwards of 100 to uh, 1,000 kilotons above that. So this is a very severe, very important step forward if they've mastered it. The components look about right regarding the photographs, but we just don't know at this point. Right. So what does the U.S. response need to be? It needs to be a, a very stern uh, looking at square in the eye saying this continued menacing of the allies in the region and us is not acceptable. I mean, we have to now accept the fact that Hawaii uh, and other elements of the eastern seaboard could be hit by a nuclear weapon, and more importantly, the homeland could be hit easily by what we call an EMP, electromagnetic pulse weapon. Right. The China, they've actually, North Koreans have acknowledged the fact they're looking at this for the first time. And again, your audience can Google this. Something called Starfish Prime back in 1962 was our first experience with it where this this blast over the Pacific took out po the power grid in Hawaii. It, it would be far worse today because everything we do now is electronically right. based and it, it would be very severe. I'm going to ask this question. Sure. And I have, I'm sitting in a chair here in New York so I am not obviously involved. You heard all the pundits say you know, there's no good solution here. But at the end of the day, we need to come up with a solution. Right. What is that solution going to be? Well, the solutions that have been tried in the past were feckless. Uh, look, we've been on this path since 1994 and the so-called framework agreement by President Clinton. Uh, doing the same thing over and over again, getting and uh, expecting different results is insane, and we have to stop that. So what we have to do now is lay out what we are not willing to accept and then enforce it. Uh, John Bolton uh, spoke uh, before about the fact that the, the Iranians are involved. We need to hold the Iranians accountable. People talk about how the North Korean program has been ex ex basically expanded quickly. It's because of the money we gave the Iranians got sent over to the, 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 the North Koreans. Next, right. China. We got to hold China completely accountable. Look, this is one of those areas where we actually have more leverage over China to do the right thing than we think. We need to return, uh, this may sound strange, we need to return manufacturing to the United States and tell China, look, either you help us or we don't need you in a lot of areas right now you're making money. So we've got to look at all the things we can do to influence the North Koreans. The Chinese, the Iranians are both things we should do. And then most importantly, to basically make it very clear, the moment anything happens, to any interest, you hit something, you hit Guam, you hit uh, Japan, you're going to suffer a big price, and that price is going to be paid by Kim Jong Un. He personally will have to pay that price. Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, final question. Sure. How does this end? Well, it ends eventually, someday, I believe, with the ultimate resolution of the two, the two states, uh, North and South Korea, coming back together. Uh, look, this is how East and West Germany finally came back together, and right. I think ultimately they would end it. The question becomes, how do you do that? And uh, that should be our long-term objectives. With that said, uh, in the meantime, we cannot stand for a, a madman, Un, menacing right. the people around him and potentially using nuclear weapons to give them third parties, terrorists, and other folks. It's, it's not acceptable. One of the most complicated international situations Absolutely. our country has ever faced.